Hello and welcome to the criminology session for year 13 uh, for 2023. Uh, this is brought to you by a school and I will be your presenter for the following sessions. Um, my name is Mr. Aigamatic Jones. I am a criminology teacher for a school and work in a number of schools in Keredigion as well as a couple in Kermanesha teaching criminology. Now, what I intend doing for the next three sessions is discussing um, matters to do with um, 3.3 and 3.4. Now, I assume that you all already would have done 3.1 and 3.2, which is the role and contribution of agencies towards social control. So you will have looked at what the police do, what their powers are, what their roles are. You would have looked at the prison service. You would have looked at the CPS. You would have looked at the court system. So you know something about how they're set up, how they role, what they actually do. Um, so this is following on from that, which is, uh, that is more about describing what they do. Now, as you can see on the screen with 3.3, it's about examining the limitations on agencies in achieving social control. So that will be the focus of my uh, presentation for you today. In the second session, uh, I will be evaluating the effectiveness of agencies in achieving so social control. Now, that obviously means looking at their strengths, what they do uh, effectively, and looking at the uh, things that they do uh, which are less effective or areas of their work where they have been criticised. And finally, in the last session, uh, I will be looking at exam questions, where questions about 3.3 and 3.4 have appeared on the exam paper itself. Now, the first thing to um, make clear is this word social control. It tends to throw uh, pupils during exam time. Um, social control means more or less controlling behavior because sometimes you, they have the question comes up and says something like, how is funding uh, a limitation when attempting to achieve social control? And pupils get hung up on this word social control. What exactly does the question mean? But what it means is controlling behavior, making sure people do not break the law. Okay, so how is, for example, funding a limitation when it comes to controlling behavior and making people follow the law? Okay, so when you see those words social control, it means um, be, um, controlling behavior, okay? Uh, stopping people from breaking the law. Now, in order to do this uh, question, you would need to look at um, seven different aspects. Okay, uh, we need to look at reoffending or recidivism, as it's called, uh, the legal. Uh, um, constraints or our civil liberties, uh, which prevent um, agencies from um, controlling us too badly, too much. The access to resources we got, we need to look at. Um, money, finance, um, we need to look at. Local and national policies, uh, the environment, and crimes for moral reasons. Okay, so those are the seven areas that we need to address for this particular question. And they have come up in the past in 2019, for example, the question was how were cr crimes um, committed for moral imperatives or moral reasons um, a limitation in achieving social control. In 2020, uh, questions was uh, about recidivism, uh, reoffending, and how that was a limitation in trying to achieve social control. Uh, also, there was a question on 2020, they were quite keen on this in 2020, how a lack of resources um, prevents or limits social control. And in 2022, there was a question about how finance uh, limits agencies in examining, in achieving social control. Now, they could ask not just about agencies, but they could ask you about um, the police, how um, um, finance is a is, is limits the police in achieving social control rather than agencies, which is all of them. So remember that, okay? Uh, but the questions have been in the past, as four of the seven have come up. Um, so the only one that hasn't come up is, the only ones that haven't come up is local and national policies, uh, the environment and civil liberties. Those, those are the three that haven't been. Um, so perhaps um, focusing on that. Okay, so the, the limitations facing agen agencies in ensuring social control. Uh, the first one uh, we're going to look at is um, reoffending rates. 
Now, of course, um, the problem with reoffending is that um, people are not uh, changing their behaviours. Okay, reoffending rates are high. Now, there are 90,000 people in jail at the moment, as we speak, 2025, 24, uh, because the real, re right realist view that more time equals less crime. So people spend more time in jail now than they have uh, ever before. The Howard League for Penal Reform recently uh, said that uh, overcrowding in jails is at emergency levels. And you would have seen in the news during November and December 2023, uh, a lot of talk about overcrowding in prisons and the fact that people had to be let out of jail early, on early release, on early license, um, so that uh, they could accommodate uh, more serious prisoners. So this is a big problem. Um, when it comes to um, re, um, prison population and reoffending rates. Um, now, why? Well, the reason is uh, if you've been in jail for 12, uh, if you've been in jail, there's 12 months of supervision uh, after prison, and many, many are now being recalled uh, for reoffending. Um, now, there are various reasons for that, which I'll, I'll get onto in, during the course of this presentation. Um, but 48 percent of adults reoffend within a year of going to prison. Um, if they've been to prison for less than 12 months, then the reoffending rate is 63 uh, percent. Uh, females that have been to jail for less than 12 months, um, 73 percent of them reoffend in less in uh, within 12 months of being released. And with children or those under 18 years old, the reoffending rate is 77 uh, percent. Um, you know, will reoffend in prison uh, if they've been there for less than 12 months. So this is a massive cost, okay? And this cost is a limitation, uh, which we'll get onto when we discuss finance. 18.1 billion pounds is spent on just on people who reoffend. Now, sent another reason prisons are full uh, is that um, prison centres are much longer now. The right realist uh, ideology is in control. Uh, so um, you now spend, on average, for violent crimes, 26 months more in jail than you would have in 2003. Um, a life sentence also in 2003 would have been something like 12 years and five months, uh, actual time spent in prison. Uh, but now it's more 21 years and three months. So, you know, the, these are these are reasons why uh, prisons are overcrowded. And violent crimes have seen sentences are generally, you know, much larger than they used to be. OK, now the problem is, of course, is that prisons are not working. That is the limitation. What you want to happen is that people go to prison. They learn uh, their mistakes and they come out uh, and do not reoffend. So that is a way of controlling behavior, social control, but it's not working. All those statistics tell you that the reoffending rates are very, very high. Okay, so that is a limitation in, in um, achieving social control. There's overcrowding in prisons. So there's two things here. Uh, overcrowding means less resources, less staff, less, um, less time to rehabilitate offenders, be that do anger management courses or do uh, alcohol abuse courses or just generally reintegrate uh, prisoners back into society. There's no time for it. As a result, reoffending rates are higher. Okay. More time, is, more time is spelled in the cells now than ever before. Tax on staff and suicide rates are high. Costs are spiring. So, and they let prisoners out on license early because of overcrowding. So the implication, of course, of leaving people out of jail early is, the right would argue, uh, that it doesn't give enough time for rehabilitation. Right? So this is a, a, a massive uh, limitation on the ability of, let's say, the prisons, for example, um, to uh, ensure um, social control in making sure people uh, do not break the law. OK, so that's the first one. Uh, and there was a question of this back in 22, I think, uh, was that was recidivism. OK. Um, OK, now then, th there'll be different views about this from um, from different um, sociological perspectives or social learning theory, uh, first of all, would have you um, would say that 
prisons are mainly universities of crime, right? So the problem with social control is you can't control behavior if they're going into prisons and actually learning, right? Learning uh, or copying, as a social learning thing you would have you believe, uh, criminal behavior. So they're actually learning to be better criminals. Well, actually they're not, are they? Because the reoffending rates are high, so they're obviously being caught as well. But they're learning new tricks. They're not as they're still unsuccessful, but they're learning a new trick. They're becoming a more accomplished uh, criminals. Um, so they they copy the behaviour they see. Uh, so this is again a problem. Why uh, it's not working? That is a limitation. We're not able to control behaviour. We're not able to ensure social control. Marxists uh, would have you believe. Um, that the law is against the poorer people. The police, the, the police are policing the poor. Right? This is an unequal society. It's a crimeogenic society, right? Which encourages law-breaking. Why? Because people are being treated unequally. At the top, you've got the bourgeois who own all the property, who all have all the money, the elite, and the proletariat, the poor, poorer people. Uh, there is a massive wealth inequality there. And the only way that they can achieve this wealth is by breaking the law. Okay, and uh, Marx is rather believed that the state oppressive uh, apparatus, which is the police and the courts, so, uh, it's a state issue. Inequality equals crime equals reoffending, right? Unless the entire system is turned on its head, and another political way is seen. So that's why Marxists would say it's a limitation because. Nothing to do really with the prisons and it's the entire system. Uh, the entire system is broken. Uh, Interactionalists would argue uh, the limitation is when you go to prison, you get a label. Right? The label you receive is criminal. You know, you can't escape from it. You cannot escape from it. It becomes, if you remember, you work from unit two, uh, a self-fulfilling prophecy. You you internalize that label. Uh, you need you become that label. You become criminal. And the pressure group Unlock would agree with that. They would say, yes, indeed, that is exactly what happens when you go to prison, when you come out, you just cannot get rid of that label of being a prisoner or being a an offender. Okay? So that is a big problem that you can't escape from. The, uh, the right wing, of course, would argue that uh, punishments are too soft. And this is why uh, reoffending rates are... Um, high because there's nothing to fear from going to prison. Um, people make a rational choice to break the law. The right would have you agree. So therefore, they look at the cost benefit and the cost, the cost and the punishment, therefore, must be more severe. And this is why we've seen an increase in the number of people in prison, then an increase in the number of people called back to prison during license or when they're early released. And this is why we have a, um, a rise in the number of months and years given as part of sentencing, which are a lot more severe these days, uh, but not severe enough, according to the, to the right wing. Okay, so we need to be more severe is the, the limitation. The right would say is that we're not severe enough. Okay, and that's the limitation. So um, you can see, therefore, how your elements of unit two can be used there uh, as, a, as a discussion when you're discussing um, uh, reoffending rates and um, why that is a limitation. Okay, all the problems it brings about, it's just not working. Okay. Now then, the next one to discuss uh, is civil liberties and legal barriers, uh, which hasn't been a question asked in an exam paper uh, since 2019. Uh, of course, we all have civil rights and it's a good thing, okay? Now, this is a limitation, but I would argue it's a limitation in a good way because this prevents uh, the agencies of social control, police, uh, judges, uh, probation service, uh, blah, blah, blah. it prevents them from Im impeding our rights, okay? So in this case, uh, this is a limitation for a good thing, if you know what I mean. Because if they had the right to do whatever they wanted, then that would be a pretty uh, oppressive state. Now, the first one is, of course, we have the freedom of speech that was enshrined in the Magna Carta as far back as 1215. But we do not have the, um, the right to stoke racist or sexist hatred uh, or ca cause harm to others. 
uh, through um, your words or impede on national security. Okay, so you, we have these rights to say what we want, but only within a certain parameters. Okay, again, freedom of movement, uh, we have that. Um, that has been uh, curtailed somewhat by Brexit because uh, there was the freedom of movement of goods and there was the freedom of movement uh, from, uh, for citizens across Europe uh, before Brexit was, was implemented. Um, um, uh, best not say many more about that. Um, yeah, so so we have the freedom we can move around. around. Okay, next one: freedom from arrest. Of course, this is enshrined in Article Five of the Human Rights Act. Okay, we have the freedom uh, to go about our business without being arrested as long as the law um, allows that. If we break the law, of course, uh, then we can uh, we can be arrested. Um, you have the freedom of assembly or freedom of congregation. Now, this is an interesting one of late. Um, that you can do it, but there are certain limitations when it comes, for example, for picketing if you're on strike. Uh, there are certain things stopping you from doing that. Also, you have to pay to protest now in that, in that if it needs um, police um, um, supervision, then there could, there could be an element of cost there. But they, you can be stopped protesting for national security reasons or to prevent you from breaking the the law or if you're impeding the rights of others. Now, interesting enough, in 2023, um, and this is an interesting point for you to make, um, there, there was a public order bill passed, and you may have seen reference to this in newspaper articles in the news. Now, the Public Order Act of 2023 has, has added uh, to the reasons that uh, police could stop you from protesting. For example, if you're carrying locking on equipment, that means if you're carrying chains or, or locks that you intend to use in order to chain yourself to a building, uh, much as the suffragettes did before the First World War, or if you're carrying um, glue, which you're likely to use to stick yourself onto the floors, as we've seen with some Extinction Rebellion people doing, uh, and it all comes from the work because of a reaction to the um, what the Extinction Rebellion have been doing. Uh, you can also be arrested now if you if you protest and you obstruct uh, major transport. Um, now we've seen the Extinction Rebellion uh, sitting in front of cars, sitting in front of buses, um, obstructing key transport. They, now you can be arrested for doing that now. Uh, if you also um, uh, interfere, now this is an interesting one, if you interfere with them um, uh, national infrastructure. Now that's quite a a, a vague. Um, it'll be interesting to see judges um, um, do a um, interpretation of what exactly national infrastructure would entail. Um, but um, if you interfere with national infrastructure, a uh, key national infrastructure, uh, then you can be arrested as well. So the limitations you see here. Um, and as well, as the police has have the right if, uh, during a protest to stop and search if they think you've got locking equipment on you. So they've got more rights to stop and search you now. So the implication of civil liberties and legal barriers is is is, is mostly positive. Okay, it stops our rights, and certainly the Marxists would would agree that it stops the elite from oppressing the proletariat. Uh, well, the Marxists believe they are being oppressed anyway, but but oppressing the proletariat too too much to prevent the elite from from in, from really exercising excessive and um, excessive control over people. So they would see this as a good thing, as a um, thing that limits um, social control, but for a good reason. Uh, but there is an element there uh, of um, the limitations being taken away. In when it comes to f right to congregate and freedom uh, to assemble, okay. And the final one on the list there is um, uh, freedom to uh, worship, of course. Um, and that is again a uh, Human Rights Act, um, Article Nine in this case, uh, which gives you the right to um, um, worship and follow uh, wear religious clothing and to uh, follow religious holidays. OK, so those legal rights there, uh, they, they, they are a limitation, but they're a good limitation, you know what I mean? It's to prevent uh, an over-oppressive um, um, system. You can see Abu uh, 
a quite cut hand there on, on the screen. Uh, now there was a there was a complaint. This was a complaint that his religious rights and his rights to say things of extreme nature, um, they couldn't do anything about him because he had the right to say what he was saying because of his religion. So there was a big, big debate about this, okay? Uh, please Google it, uh, Abu Qatada. Uh, he, was, uh, he was saying radical um, messages and he was, um, um, he was facing being deported to Jordan. Um, but uh, he said that he was saying these things under the freedom of speech. So, and he was quite extreme. And this was uh, limiting uh, the police's ability to do something to stop him. And it was a major political issue. Please have a look at it. Um, Theresa May was involved, uh, the, the ex-Prime Minister who was Home Secretary at the time. But it's, uh, it's an interesting one to look at. OK, um, access to, to resources and support uh, is a problem. OK, is a limitation, because if you don't have resources, if people don't have support, then they're going to reoffend. You cannot control people's behavior. You can turn them around if you don't have the resources, if you don't have the support that they need in order to turn their lives around. That is impossible. Now, left wing views, uh, of course, are that we need more support. We need more support systems. We need more staff. Uh, we need more money um, because interventions are needed. Uh, if we take, for example, in prisons, I've just mentioned before that you need the anger management courses, need the behavioral courses, need the cognitive behavioral therapy, you need the drug therapies, you need the uh, ed you need education. OK, so all those all those resources and support, uh, if they're not in place, then you're going to limit your ability to social control, limit your ability to control people's behavior. Because if you're in prison, clearly there needs to be a change of behavior. If you don't have the resources and the support necessary to do that, it's going to be a problem. So you have, you know, uh, the Unlock charity, of course, does a lot of, uh, um, brings a lot of focus onto this. They work with governments or, or they try to work with government to uh, get rid of this discrimination that, that prisoners have and the lack of support that they have in prison in order to turn their lives around and the lack of support they have outside prison uh, when they when they are released from prison the lack of support they have outside prison so the unlock is one charity that works very hard on this um, this issue because there are problems uh, when people leave prisons they have problems with housing uh, they don't have jobs and in variety what only one in every four actually has a job to go to training is limited right and they face clear discrimination uh, when they come come out of prison or when they're trying to try and find work um, this is a problem okay that, that can only be answered by resources and support but if then you don't have resources and support it's a limitation uh, low skill um, well, literacy skills, um, the average age, reading age of a prison prisoner is 11 years old. Now, that's, um, sorry, 62% um, of prisoners have reading age below 11 years old, okay, or of an 11 years old. Now, that's, that's very low. The, the, the general population figure is 15%, but the prisoner population is 62. So, obviously, Resources need to be targeted towards improving literacy skills as well as numerical skills, um, which I think the numerical skills of the average prisoner is about nine years old. OK, I don't think it's much higher, mind you, in a general population, but it certainly is higher. OK, so what chance really, what chance really of not reoffending? OK, 13, one th um, understaffing, you know, cuts, we'll, we'll discuss that when we look at um, uh, finances. But understaffing is a very, very real problem. So, what chance really of not reoffending? You know, when you you go to prison, you lose any housing benefit. That goes twenty percent leave jails um, um, without a house. They don't have a house to go to. Twenty percent. Um, th third of um, prisons were deemed by Ofsted to have had uh, insufficient uh, educational provision. Uh, because this is important when it comes to um, rehabilitation. If the support is not there, if the resources aren't, aren't there, they're going to reoffend again. Okay. When you're released from prison, you are given a grant of forty-six pounds. Uh, that has been the same since 1997. 
which is a, a, a problem in itself. Um, yeah, only as I said, only 25% only doesn't have jobs, only one in nine have a house to go to. So these figures are, 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 are problems. They don't have the access to support and resources that will allow them to change their behavior, that will allow social control to happen. You've got the um, ROTL, which is a release on a temporary license, of course, which will happen again. The uh, problem is they're released on temporary license and there's not, not the resources there to support them. There's no staff to support them, to give them that support. Um, and a major problem is that the prisoners are often released on Friday, uh, which um, means, of course, when it comes to Friday, they're released in the afternoon because all the resources they need are shut for the weekend. All the support they need are not there till the Monday. Okay? Um, so... Um, yeah, this is a problem. Uh, the right realist would, would tell you, of course, that the more time people are in jail, the more chance there is to rehabilitate them. So the more resources and the more support uh, they get, the longer, because the sentence is longer. Well, that's debatable, but it's certainly uh, one argument that's um, being put forward. Okay, and next one is finance. And this was a question in 2022, as it happens. Okay, now, Finance, of course, is everything, uh, unless, you believe, unless you believe in the milk of human kindness. Um, things need to be paid for um, at the end of the day. Now, as you can see, there's been a, a cuts across a wide range of services uh, up to 2020. There's been some turnaround now up to, since 2021, 22. Uh, but with an election due in 2024 this year, I'm sure, um, then and promised tax cuts, of course, then, of course, the finance is going to be an issue yet again from 2024 onwards with the war in Ukraine affecting finances, the cost of living crisis affecting finances, um, dubious political decisions affecting finances. So um, there have been cuts. Police budget has been cut 18% uh, since 2010. Um, there are 20,000 less policemen uh, to be had now, which is a huge issue when trying to control people, when trying to ensure social control. There has been a bit of a turnaround of late, and they have employed more police. But as I've just said, in 2024, we will just have to wait to see what happens on that front, because um, because of the suspect, suspected tax cuts will need, of course, to be less finance available. Um, as you can see, uh, Crown, Crown Prosecution Services have had uh, massive cuts, and this has led to the accusation that they uh, just follow. Uh, they try, they, they, they are prosecuting easier crimes. Okay, crimes that are easier, uh, lesser offences because they're easier to prove to save money. Now, whether that's true or not, the Crown Prosecution Service denies it, um, and this is also a, a, a claim made about the police that they follow up. Uh, with the lead of the CPS on lesser crimes, because A, it helps them reach their targets without spending um, too much money, and B, easier to arrest. So, you know, there's, there's, to get a result. Um, yeah, cuts to a third of the CPS staff uh, in the last um, in the period up to 2020, again, being being brought back a little now, uh, but we'll have to wait to 2024 to see what happens there. And uh, the probation service have massive issues with recruiting staff, staff shortages. The private companies that were doing some of the work that the pro uh, that the probation service is doing have now been disbanded. So all their work, I think there were 20 uh, private companies doing the work as well. All their work now has gone back into the um, probation service. Uh, increasing their workload. Uh, their finance has increased as well, obviously, uh, but um, they have an increased workload and little and uh, not enough staff at the moment. Now, that's that's going into how effective they are as well, but there is an interlink between 3.3 uh, and 3.4 here when we look at um, uh, the limitations, because one of the limitations is finance, isn't it, and how effective they are. Okay, so there is some interlink there. Okay. Um, Next one is national policies and local policies. Uh, hasn't been a question on this. Um, yeah, like the CPS, um, you know, uh, 
going for particular crimes at a certain time at local level or national level can be a limitation because if you target specific crimes, for example, on the screen, you can see hate crimes, which has been a focus, a national focus in 2017. If you're targeting those type of crimes, obviously other type of crimes are going to be on the increase. For example, in London, uh, they are going after gang crimes and going after particular knife crimes. So if you do that, of course, then it means on a local level, other crimes are going uh, unnoticed, perhaps drug crimes, etc., gang-related violence, uh, VATP uh, crimes, VATP is violence against the person. Okay, so that's, this limits social control in certain areas of crime. OK, um, hate, hate crime now is a national priority, of course. Now, if you think also of the Welsh um, um, situation uh, from Monday, January the 8th, um, the police will start um, stopping people uh, for breaking the 20 mile an hour speed routes. Now, doing this, of course, is going to take resources away. If you're targeting uh, urban areas where 20 miles per hour will now be enforced, uh, obviously, there'll be less resources on motorway traffic management. There'll be less on uh, rural communities traffic management issues. So these national policies, of course, they affect, they limit, uh, they may increase in one area, but they will limit your ability for social control in other areas. Okay. Um, of course, there's also political, then says, because uh, the question says here, yeah, national policies, then there's also political ramifications. Uh, the current government, as you have been at the end of 2023, targeted vagrants. And if I'm sure you saw on the social media or your TikToks, um, and they were gonna, going to arrest vagrants and take away their tents. Well, okay, if you're doing that, if you're targeting vagrants, you're going, which is uh, which is a law-breaking activity. You're going to miss out on other crimes. Okay, so that is important um, to uh, to look at as well as a limitation. And last but one is the environment. Okay, because that's a, a key issue. Uh, if if you have broken the law, you go to prison, you get out of prison. What what happens? You end up in the same environment you were when you went in. So now when the environment is, as the Marxist would say, a crimogenic environment, one where there's inequality, uh, then it's going to lead you back to reoffending. So that is a real limitation on social control in the fact that you know it's inevitable that people are released into the same environment that turned them into criminals in the first place. Now, functionalists, or perhaps Merton specifically, would talk about the strain theory that they they broke the law in the first place because they didn't have the means to achieve the goals, the American dream, if you remember your work from Unit 2. They didn't have the means to achieve that goal, so they turned to crime. They innovated, right? as Merton would call it, they were innov innov innovators. So they, they turned towards crime through other means, drugs, stealing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now, when you release them from prison, they go back to the same environment that caused them to end a prison in the first place. Uh, so it's very, very hard, of course, to you know to 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 think of or to expect a different outcome than you've had in the first place. Uh, only 25% of prisoners uh, on being released have a job to go to. 12% um, of employers said that they would employ somebody with a criminal record. No, that is not a lot. 12%. That means 88% of 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 employers would not employ somebody with a criminal record. Well, what chance does that give them, right? What chance does that give them? Well, interaction would say they've been labeled, okay? And that is the limitation there. They're labeled, they're gonna end up in the same environment in the same situation they were before. Um, most do not have a firm family support system. 68% um, of prisoners don't, don't get any family visits. And again, 61% of prisoners who are released do end up back in their own families, which is a safer environment than the 30, other 39% whom uh, end up sofa surfing or go from apartment to apartment or house to house. So, you know, we really don't know what the situation is regarding uh, those um, people. Okay, so environment is a big factor. That hasn't been a question. It's a big factor limiting uh, agency's ability um, to to control, to, to, 
to implement social control because, you know, if the environment that made them criminals in the first place is the same environment they're coming back to after prison, you know, it's a non-brainer, isn't it? So it's a very hard one to um, to um, to answer that, really, unless you've trained and given the resources and support system when they're in prison and when they come out of prison to lead them onto a, um, a more legitimate path. Um, but I think we're uh, months, if not years, away from that kind of... Uh, Switzerland, for example, are going down this route where the support systems are in place uh, and they teach them skills, valuable skills that they can use in the community when they're released. Um, but have, have a Google with that, at, um, what, what they're doing there. Um, the last one is morally motivated crimes. Now, not to be confused with moral crimes, which you probably did in Unit 1 when you were discussing different types of crime. These are morally motivated crimes. Uh, so what this means is they're crimes that are committed by people because they truly believe they are doing the right thing. Okay, now what's the what's the um, limitation with that? Well, the limitation is if they think they're doing the right thing, then they're not going to change their behaviour. Okay, their behaviour is not going to be changed. Now, ex I've mentioned the, uh, extinction rebellion um, before. Uh, why are they doing what they're doing? They're, they're throwing dust on tennis courts and disrupting test matches and stopping in the middle of the road. Why? Because they are convinced that they are doing the right thing. Okay, And uh, much as the suffragettes were convinced they were doing the right thing, much as the same the civil rights movement were um, convinced they were doing the right thing, Extinction Rebellion find themselves in the same situation where morally they are, they are defending their actions. So it's, it's a limitation. We, it's very hard to socially control people who believe they're doing the right thing. Okay, now the couple of examples you have on the screen there is uh, you, your teacher probably has talked about Kate Gilderdale. Uh, she gave her uh, daughter Lynn Gilderdale um, drugs to help her to die. So it was an assisted suicide, uh, but she was suffering from chronic um, fatigue system. And her mother had been looking after for 17 years and the quality of life was, was such that, um, um, yes, well, drastic steps were taken. Um, Again, she um, broke the law by doing this, of course, but uh, she had a one-year conditional discharge. Uh, so, you know, the, the, how do you stop this from happening again when the sentence itself was lenient because it was a morally motivated crime? So social control in this respect is difficult uh, because we have compassion, we have sympathy as well. Uh, the group you see at the top there, the stance at 15, uh, they tied themselves to an aeroplane because they were going to extradite or deport 60 people back to Nigeria. And it was felt that if they were extradited back to Nigeria, they would um, face um, violence against them. So the 15 here um, basically destroyed the aeroplane that was going to carry them over uh, back to um, um Nigeria, uh, which could have been quite hairy for them because you can actually get life imprisonment for uh, intentional disruption of an aerodrome. Um, but as it happened, um, um, they they they, um, they were not sent. They were not sentenced harshly. I think uh, they were not. The jury found them not guilty, despite the fact that they actually were guilty. But uh, because they were morally motivated, um, the jury thought, well, they probably did. Well, we don't know why the jury said we're not allowed to ask the jury why they did what they did. But, you know, morally motivated crimes, you know, are a limitation. Uh, Alan Blythe uh, is another example your teachers might have referred to, uh, grew cannabis to help his um, his um, wife who was very ill from MS. Um, again, you know, he could be argued he was supplying uh, uh, drugs, a controlled substance, supplying and growing controlled substance. Again, he was given a hundred pound uh, fine for possession. So, you know, crimes carry out for mo morally motivated crimes. It's a limitation, okay, on social control, on controlling behavior. And those are just a couple of examples. You've got extension rebellion as well, as, a, as an example there, um, which is more probably TikTokable uh, as an example. Okay, well, thank you for listening to 3.3. Um, um, a lot of me talking, but that's the nature of 3.3. Uh, 3.4 is much the same, uh, but we'll be next week evaluating, that's next session, sorry, evaluating the effectiveness of agencies in achieving social control. So this this will, will tie in really 
uh, with 3.3 and 3.4 together because effectiveness and limitations, you know, is, is, you know, effective, non-effective. So limitations will come in there as well. And then uh, be, because they are the most problematic questions on the exam paper in Unit 4, we'll look at some of the exam questions based on 3.3 and 3.4. Uh, because this idea of social control does throw candidates so when they have a question uh, in achieving social control or, or in limiting social control, candidates get a bit confused about what exactly do I need to write about here? What exactly do they mean by social control? Okay, so I'll be banging on about that. Social control is controlling behavior, making sure people stick to the law. Okay, so more about that in the next presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in and please do uh, move on to um, presentation two uh, at your earliest convenience. Thank you.